My parents were doctors, and back in Soviet times they were allowed to travel. Well, of course, not to all the countries, but some countries were open to them. And they have visited Africa, Georgia, Bulgaria, and everywhere that were treated as Soviet people. I have a subscriber from Slovakia who moved to Canada back in 1980s, and one of the first questions that she received there was, do you speak Soviet? So, are there Soviet people? Today, Russia tries to recreate this myth of the USSR that actually resembles the Nazis' idea of Iron Folk. Now, Russians speak about one people, and they try to deny the identities of Ukrainians, Georgians, and many other beautiful and independent nations all over the world. So, there is a question. Are there, were there Soviet people? And the answer is both yes and no. Back in 1920s, just at the beginning of the Soviet history, the policy of federalization was pretty popular. Nations were encouraged to support their languages, their national cultures were also supported, but it all ended up very quickly. And by the mid of 1930s resulted in millions of victims who were prosecuted for their nationalist ideas and the result, a new wave of Russification began. This was also a period when the ideological cliché of Soviet people appeared. The idea was that nationalities will disappear and, in contrast to them, there will be brotherhood of workers. Perhaps this is also the very first moment when the toxic idea of Russians as elder brothers for Ukrainians, Poles or Moldovians appeared. The idea was also that nationalities and countries will be focused on their socialist ideologies, but not on the traditions they share, religion or anything else. And the very end of this process would mark the beginning of communism. So, as soon as communism wins, nationalities disappear. One of the brightest and perhaps most recognizable Soviet leaders, uh, Nikita Khrushchev, back in 1961, tried to define this term on many of the meetings that he had with political elite and also in media. So, when speaking about the concept of Soviet people, he focused on the unifying role of Russian language, and many of post Soviet countries, including Ukraine, still suffer of that unifying role. Also, the focus was on forced migration. What is that? Many professionals, after they have graduated from the schools, universities, various technical schools, were forced to travel to faraway republics as the process of Soviet people migration. And contrary to modern idea of mobility, it was totally forced and people did not have a choice whether they want to stay and continue working, for example, in their native town, but they were encouraged to mix with other cultures and republics. As a result, uh, it was pretty difficult for them to preserve and keep their national traditions, I don't know, some religious beliefs that were prosecuted back in Soviet times, and very quickly they were russified, as once again Russian language and Russian culture was dominant within uh, plants, factories, schools, universities and all the other places where people spent most of their time. Another thing is um, that borders disappeared and, of course, traveling within Soviet Union was simple. But at the same time, traveling outside Soviet Union was, in the majority of cases, impossible. Especially if we talk about the countries that opposed communism and socialism. Also, the idea was that Soviet people are all united by communist ideology, and as a result, this created a fake idea of socialist motherland. This is not just the Soviet Union. This idea was not limited, and as a matter of fact, it allowed Soviet soldiers protect this motherland in various corners of the world, which led to many wars and conflicts in Asia, Africa, Latin America, where Soviets believe this was their zone of influence. 
Another important aspect of life in Soviet Union that we forget talking about is the dominant role of Russian people. Many of them were sent to various Soviet republics to become the leaders of the parties or to become the directors of plants, factories and so on. And this was also an example of policy of Russification that was described as a new Soviet identity. And this is the reason why so many Russians are living in post-Soviet republics, because they came there and changed the cultural and national identity of the regions. This is also a, an answer to a question why so many pro-Russian people lived in Crimea and Donbass, because for decades they were forcibly bringing people to industrialize the region, to occupy various leading positions and as a result to russify an important industrial area. And in Crimea the situation was different, it was full of Russian military and as a result the annexation was pretty simple, once again because there were hundreds or even hundreds of thousands of Russian military people who lived there for decades, starting from the Soviet era. In the middle of Soviet history, Russian language was dominant at the schools and universities. It was the language of media. It was the language necessary for any kind of career you want to pursue. Mixed marriages were encouraged and people traditionally tried to find some Russian relatives in their families to become more Soviet. So one of the most important conclusions we can make within this video is the fact that Soviet people were actually Russian people. And to become Soviet you have to be Russified. I know that many of my subscribers are often surprised with the fact that Ukraine, Baltic countries, Poland were so strong in their opposition after the end of the communism and we never wanted to return back to the USSR, contrary to what Vladimir Putin and millions of Russians want now. The reason is that neither Poland nor Ukraine were parts of the Soviet Union. We were occupied by the Soviet Union and this is a totally different story. It is not the desire of Ukrainian people and it was not the desire of Ukrainian people to become parts of the USSR. We were occupied for a very long, tragic, gloomy period and now we are fighting for our independence. That's why the myth of Soviet people continues. It evolves in modern doctrine of Vladimir Putin, who speaks about one people, who speaks about Soviet people, who speaks about Russian people and as a result Ruski Mir. This is a very dangerous concept and our task is to understand that Soviet very often means Russian and many people still suffer from the myth that they carry back from their dark Soviet past. But at the very beginning of this video, I have asked you a question, are there Soviet people? And the answer was both yes and no. I have just explained why the answer no is correct, because it is a totally artificial and poisonous concept that was created by Soviet communist propaganda and now continues in the ideology of Putinism. But why did I say yes? Well, because there is a very tiny percentage of people who can be called Homo Sovieticus. Those people have nostalgia for the period of the USSR. Some of them are kind people who substitute their youth memories, sweet ice cream, happy winters with the times of the USSR and others were working or poisoned by Soviet propaganda and still believe there was something good in a country that led to the deaths of the millions. Soviet myths must be debunked and the myth of Soviet people is totally poisonous. Soviet people are Russian people and all the other nations were occupied and suffered a lot. My name is Anna, I am from Ukraine and I'm going to be your guide to the gloomy period of Soviet era, because we don't want USSR to be reborn ever again.